Hey everyone, my name is Abhishek and today we are going to talk about lighting in Blender. Now lighting is one of the most important part when it comes to 3D rendering and it can really make or break your scene. And in this video, I'm going to share some techniques and tips that I came across. And trust me, when I started using them in my renders, the results were like 10 times much better. And if you create product animations, then you should start using them as well. So before we begin, I'm going to show you this iPhone parody commercial which I made and I used all of these lighting technique and you can see that the result is really mind blowing to a level that people were not able to tell whether this was an official iPhone commercial or just a parody. And all of these techniques that I'm about to show you will give you much better results like this example. So the first technique that I'm going to show you, you can use it to reveal your products. So for example, you don't want to reveal the full product, but you only want to give a little bit of teaser or sort of like rim light effect. So for example, in this shot, you can see that we are able to see only the edges of the product and not the entire thing. So this is a very powerful technique. I use this a lot. And let me show you how to create this. So right now I'm in Blender and I've already imported this iPhone model, which I'm going to show. And over here we have the rendered view and we have a simple setup with a camera, nothing else. Now for these examples, I'm going to use the Cycles rendering engine, but you can use EV as well, but Cycle gives much better results. So it's better to use Cycles if you want to create like professional looking outputs. So if I go over here, I'm going to switch this to the rendering view or viewport shading mode like that. So you can see that right now we don't have any kind of lighting. We are able to see a little bit of product and it's only because we have some background lighting. So first thing I like to do is I'm going to go inside the world tab and over here we have this background. Now if I increase this, you can see that it will add some overall lighting in the scene. I'm going to set this to zero so that we don't have any kind of lighting. Now you can see that it's completely dark. So now we'll begin by adding some light. So in order to do that, you can press shift A, let's add a light. Now I'm going to use area light. So right away you can see we are able to see something and if I press G C and you can see that the light is present and we are able to illuminate the top of it like that. Now we only want to highlight the edges. Now it's actually quite easy. First I'm going to select this and let's make it a little bit bigger like that and let's go inside the light properties and we can increase the amount to something like 500. Now you can see that it's actually quite bright. Now the thing is, if you want to illuminate just the edges, then you don't want any light in front of the object. You basically want the lights at the edges or somewhere at the back. So if I press numpad seven and go to the top view, you can see we have this camera over here and our product at the side. So I'm going to select the light and I'm going to press G and let's move it to the back somewhere around here. Perfect. Now, again, we are not able to see anything because the light is facing downwards. So we can press numpad three to change the angle. So now press R and let's rotate it like that so that it's pointing towards our product. And right away, you can see we are able to see some really nice highlights. Now I'm going to press numpad seven so that we can see it from the top as well. Now I'm going to press R again and let's move it towards the smartphone like that. And right now you can see that we are able to see some really nice lighting. And if I go back now, you can play around with the size of it. If I make it like really big, you can see that now the edges are highlighted more. Now I can make it smaller to something like that. Again, it's completely up to you. you can just play around with whatever you want. Now if you want to do the same thing on the other side, then you can select this press shift D. Now we have two copies. Now let's press numpad seven and I'm going to place one at this side as well. So let's press G and let's move it over here. Let's press R and just rotate it like that. So now you can see that we have these two edges highlighted. Again, you can play around with this position. So if I press G, C and let's move it down. Now you can just play around with the angles. Now I can just simply point it to the top. Now you can see that we have this edge highlighted and this one highlighted just by using two lights. So this is the technique that you can use to illuminate the edges. Now I can add one more light at the bottom to illuminate the space. So let's press shift A, let's add a light, area light. Let's press R, X, 180 degree because we want this to be top down. Let's scale this up, press G, Z and let's place it at the bottom. Now you will notice that as we have placed this light at the bottom, we are able to see this as well. Now in order to get rid of it, you have to play around with the position or the angle. So let's play around with the angle. So I'm going to press R X and if I rotate it like this, you can see that we are still able to see this bottom highlight, but we are not able to see any of light over here. So I'm going to press G and let's place it over here. Again, you can play around with the intensity to make this like really pop out like that. 
Now here you can see we have illuminated our object. Now if you want, you can add one more light at the top as well. If you want to highlight this edge as well, let me just quickly do that. Press Shift D and we have this thing. Press G Z and let's place it over here. Again, let's press numpad 3 and press R X and let's rotate it like that. Now you can see that we have illuminated all of these lights. If you want to make them smaller, then you can press S to scale this down like that. Let's do the same thing over here as well. Now there's one more thing that I like to do is I don't want the lights to be static. So you can animate these using an empty object. Let me show you how. So let's press Shift A. Let's add an empty object. Let's add a plane axis. Now I'm going to press S to scale this up quite a bit. Now I'm going to select all of these lights. So let's select this one. Hold down the Shift key. Let's select this one. Hold down the shift key, select this one and this one. And at the last, I'm going to select this empty object, which we just created. Now you can press control P and let's parent the objects by keeping the transform perfect. Now if I select this, press R, Y, and I start rotating it. You will notice that our lights are moving around the edges of this product. And R, Y. Now if I keep on rotating, you will be able to see all of these lights moving around the product which is exactly what I did in the example, which I showed you. And the best thing is that you can play around with different kind of animation as well. Now, if I just simply press R instead of like rotating it on a particular axis, and if I just start rotating it, you can see that we have a bunch of different really nice lighting. So you can like go from completely dark to have little bit of illuminated edges to like little bit revealing your product like that. So this is how you can have multiple lights and illuminate only the particular edges and then add an empty to control all of the lighting as well at once. So this is a really powerful technique that I use a lot in my renders and it's very amazing. Now let's check the next technique that I use a lot. So over here we have this again a simple scene of iPhone and I have this camera pointing towards the side. Now I'm going to switch this to the rendering view. And again, we don't have any kind of lights in our scene. So that's why it's completely black. Now let's start adding some light. So there are two ways in which you can add a light. So you can either press shift and, and you can add a light which is present inside this like that. Or you can also use a plane surface. So I'm going to delete this. So if I press shift A, let's add a mesh. Let's add a plane. Now I'm going to press G, C and let's place it to the top. Right now you can see that we are not able to see anything because we don't have applied any material to this. So now I'm going to select the plane and if you click on new, we can type whatever name you want. Let's type this emission light. Perfect. Now in order to make this act as a light, I'm going to select the principal BSDF and let's delete this by pressing X, press shift A, let's add an emission node. Now I can plug this to the surface and right away you can see we are able to see something. Now this is basically acting as the light which we add, area light which we add like this and we can control the strength using this like that. Now this is the most basic setup and most of the people use this only but if you really want to stand this out instead of using a simple plane we can use something called gradient light and let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to quickly select this and let's place it to a really nice angle. So I'm going to press RX, let's rotate it and press G and let's place it over here. Now again, we are able to see this plane, but we don't want to. So I'm going to select the plane and if you're using the cycles render, you can go inside the object properties and you can go inside the visibility and under the ray visibility, turn off the camera. Now you won't be able to see it inside the viewport, but you will be able to see the object. So I'm going to just place it over here. Now I'm going to scale this up like that. So you can see that we have this lighting and right now it's looking very flat. Even if I increase the amount, you can see that the lighting is very flat. Now in order to turn this light into a gradient light, what you can do is you can simply select this. And if you have node wrangler installed, you can press select this, press control T to add the image texture and all the coordinates. But if you don't have, then you can just simply press shift A and you can type texture coordinate let's add one over here press shift a let's add a mapping node like that now plug this generated into the vector now instead of plugging this into anything we are going to add a color ramp node so press shift a let's add color ramp now let's plug the vector into the factor and this color will go inside this color so right away you can see we are not able to see anything but if i move these closer like that 
you can see that we have made some changes to the light now these are not visible because we have hide the plane so let me just quickly select this and if i enable the camera you can see that we are able to see something in our light now it's not just a simple plane which we had earlier now we have something called gradient light now we can control this more by simply using these so you can control the angle as well so if i set this to something like that and you can control how much fall off you want like this and let's see what changes it adds to our scene so i'm going to again hide this using this and let's go inside the camera so you can see that we are already seeing some gradient light so we have light over here but as we are moving down you can see that it starts to fade away now let's select this and you can play around with it however you want now just by moving these sliders you can see that we are changing the lighting and you can see that we have only illuminated this region and this is completely dark because we have gradient fall off and you can play around with the gradient fall off using these the mapping nodes as well you can play around with the angle however you want you can add keyframes to animate this as well so you can have a product and you can animate its position like this to illuminate the phone just like that now i can increase the strength a little bit like that now if you want to have more gradient into this slide then you can do that as well all you have to do is just click on this plus and you can see that it will add this new node and let me just quickly place it over here I'm going to change its color so let's make it white like that now I am going to add one more so let's click over here let's make this completely dark like that and we can probably place it something around here now I'm going to create one more so let's click plus and let's make this one completely black as well so you can play around with its position thing like things like that now you can see that we have added one more layer of the light over here so this is like completely white which is representing this area then we have dark area and then we have the bright one at this point like this so again you can play around with the position using the mapping node to represent all of these what we have created now you can see the difference between these two lighting so if i plug this out you can see that we have this very flat output but if i plug this color and you can see that we are considering these gradient colors as well so this is how you can add some gradient light and trust me it really makes your scene looks really amazing and i have used the same techniques in my renders as well so if i go over here you can see that we are able to see some gradient lighting we have dark over here we have bright and again we have dark bright areas so this is how you can create these kind of animations and you can use the gradient light to really illuminate things so over here as well we have some bright dark bright dark regions and you can use this technique to eliminate basically anything you want so these are some techniques that i use in my renders and trust me once you start using them you will see the difference in your renders too so if you have any queries or questions then you can ask in the comments below and if you want to support my work then you can check out my patreon page over there you will get access to the tutorial project files and exclusive templates that are available only on patreon so with that being said my name is abhishek and i'll see you in the next one Thank you.